Welcome to John Tiller's Battleground Civil War, and I'm playing the Gettysburg Module. Uh, this is an old game, straight up old game, <laughs> but it's a golden oldie. It's a great game, um, and there's a lot of really neat little gems in this game, so I'm hoping that when you watch this video, you're going to pick up on some of them. Maybe even think about picking up this game if you're um, if you like it. But part of the issue with the game is that the AI is not very good. <laughs> AI is just not good. It's an old game, and the AI is just, well, it is uh, a bad AI. But anyways, we're going to play this game for a little bit, give it a shot. And um, this is a battle that's near and dear to my heart. This is the Battle of Gettysburg. And in fact, this is July 2nd in the afternoon. If you look in the lower, well, where is it? It's supposed to be down here somewhere. I'll show up in a little bit. It's at, it's um, mid-afternoon on July 2nd. And what we've got going on here, this is Gettysburg. This, um, this is the um, Union left. And this is Longstreet's attack on the Union left, which included on day two an attack on Little Round Top um, and some other objectives here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to play as the Confederates and my mission is to take these flag objectives here, 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 and here, here, and here. Um, and why, why are these Union guys out here? This is Dan Sickles' core out here, the, the part of the core we can see. And what has happened is Dan Sickles, the Union defense line actually went from well, it actually didn't go from round top early. It went from about Devil's Den um, all along this line up here, this ridge line called Cemetery Ridge. And this ridge was the Union line. And this ridge continues on, and then Gettysburg is over here. And then it swings around like a hook. And on this side over here would be Culp's Hill. Um, but it would be much farther on a bigger scale. Um, and so we've got some real historical places in this battlefield. We've got Devil's Den, which is an objective, and Little Round Top. A couple of things that are important about this scenario is the amounts of the objective. So this objective is worth 300. Little Round Top is worth 1,000. This one's worth 300. This one's worth 300. This one's worth 200. It's not worth a whole lot. This one's worth 200. So the big, the big, the big money in objectives is this stuff down here. So the, the um, Holy Trinity for the Confederates is really to capture these three objectives. You can do that, you're going to be in good shape. So I'm going to play as the Confederates. I'm going to get this battle started. It is the Confederate movement phase. Bear with some of these dated graphics and um, enjoy the game. I think um, if you're a history buff, if you like the Civil War, we'll talk a little bit about the Battle of Gettysburg. I had an opportunity to visit that battlefield over the summer with my sons. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well as we go along here. Hopefully, um, and, and this this battle is going to be a multi-part battle. It's only 12 turns in the game, but it's going to take a while. So what we're going to do, we're playing as the Confederates, and we've only got some of our troops which are um, released for duty at this point. So each one of these um, represents a regiment. The strength of the regiment, if you follow my mouse cursor, is 375 men. That's the 48th Alabama, or excuse me, yeah, 48th Alabama. This is the 44th Alabama of Law's Brigade. And you can even go further into the chain to Law's Brigade, Hood's Division, and the Army of Northern Virginia. So it tells you who those guys are. This is General Hood. Uh, General Hood's got a really interesting story in the Civil War. We can go into it a little bit. But needless to say, he's got an interesting story. Um, Longstreet, McClaws. Longstreet is the the overall commander of this attack. And uh, so we're gonna launch the attack. A couple of real um, big places as far as history are concerned, Devil's Den, Little Round Top. Right over here, this spot where the, my cursor is, that is where, probably there, right between here, these two hexes, is where the 20th Maine held the far left of the Union line. If you've ever seen the movie Gettysburg, that's where Chamberlain and his boys were fighting. Um, and held off the Alabamans. Actually, Law's Alabamans, these guys here. This is the Wheatfield here. This changed uh, 
changed sides several times during the day, and by the end of the day, Confederates reigned supreme over the wheat field. They just they were just pumping troops into this wheat field. Well, the whole the whole point of this battle and the, the what what set everything apart is General Dan Sickles. That's not him. He's around somewhere. Well, Dan Sickles was a politician, and he saw this position out here, and he said this would be a great position for the enemy to put artillery and bombard our line here along this ridge. So what did he do? He took his 10,000-man corps, and he marched them out here, and he started deploying his troops in a line here. And uh, Meade saw this and told him to deploy along this cemetery ridge. He rode out to tell Sickles, what are you doing? And Sickles basically said, well, I could withdraw my troops back if you want. And Meade said, uh, it's too late for that. The and they could see the Confederates are coming. So he said, it's too late for that now. I, I suppose those people aren't gonna, are gonna have something to say about whether you're gonna be able to retreat or not. And so Sickles' corps was stuck out here. Um, and as they got battered and withdrew, um, the Union had to keep feeding more and more troops into this area, into the weed field over here, and a huge and bloody battle ensued. I'm gonna start my movement as the Confederates. These troops are already in line formation, so we'll get them moving. Try to get them going as we've still got one move left. Can we get down there? Nope, can we get over here? Nope. So some of these units, if you look down on them, they are, um, are fixed and cannot be moved. And the reason for that is, we want to keep these this core together here, or this, excuse me, this brigade, this law here. There we go. Laws Alabamians. We got some Bennings. Oh, that's right, these guys got to get to the Georgians. And this Robertson's Anderson. So they're lagging behind a little bit. Okay, so we've got these guys are released and ready to go. These guys are fixed. The reason these troops are fixed and these troops are able to move is because General Logstreet planned this attack out to be done in echelon. And essentially what will happen as the 12 turns of this game go on is that this is the first echelon coming into attack, okay? And then what will happen is sooner or later one of these units will be released and they'll come into the attack. And then one of these units will be released and they'll come into the attack. And then this unit and they'll come in. And then these guys and they'll come in. So the Confederates did this. They attacked an echelon. It was very effective in the Civil War. And the reason being was uh, as each attack occurred, the enemy would react to it. And then just as the enemy had gotten into a position where they were able to react, here comes another hammer blow. Bam, they, they, they hit him again. And it becomes more and more difficult for the defender to adjust to the attack. It's very effective in the Civil War. You wouldn't think so. You would think that because they're attacking, pe like it was almost like a piecemeal attack. But if you coordinate it right, you could get hammer blow after hammer blow after hammer blow falling on your enemy. And it had a real big effect on your enemy. Let's keep this thing moving here. And we'll not save and keep moving. Oh, volume's a little loud there. And we'll move the action dialogue. So we've got enemy troops. Why aren't you? Let's run it. So these guys are firing at my guns. All right, it's my time to fire, so I'll take these guns. I've got strength four, and so it's eight, eight artillery pieces. And I'm gonna shoot, is there a guns anywhere in here? Yep, going after the enemy batteries. Artillery is deadly in this game up close. So you really want to pound the enemy artillery any chance you get. And you'll find, there, there I got one already, nice. So that loss of one means I took out one of his cannons. And these guns are fixed so I can't, can't move them. Let's go to the artillery dialogue and see if there's anybody else that can see anybody else and fire. Nope. 
all these guns and nowhere to go. So, and that's going to be that. So we took out an enemy gun. That's a good start to the battle here. Yeah, let's go to the next phase. Confederate melee phase. There's no melee to be had. Next phase. Union move phase. So far, so good for the Confederates. We've taken out a Union gun. And we've got... Um, We've got Hood's boys moving up. So it'll be Hood's division and then Longstreet's core. Hood's division, Law's division. You know who this guy is over here. Anderson in Anderson's division. All right, I think we're on movement phase. Are we on fire phase again? Must be fire phase. Really want to do is keep pounding them. Fatigue's good too. Anytime you can cause an enemy unit to have fatigue, uh, you can um, you can make their life. Oh, nice. I'm, this artillery deal was, uh, I've actually seen the battery up here when I was at Gettysburg of the, um, I think that can hit him too. Nope. Oh, that's a bummer. At least I got one gun in action over there. We got six guns. And we're probably fourth New York artillery. The, the artillery position over here is very interesting. These guys are shooting and they could hear things hitting into the trees, etc., etc. Very cool. All right, let's keep moving. Infantry can do do damage to the guns too, so Whew, Okay, Union melee there's not gonna be any of that. All right, we're now on turn two So it seems like this game's going by quick, but trust me It slows down We got some unit Union troops down there. We don't know who they are Movement really got left yet. Five. Is that Hood? That's Hood. So I'm going to keep him just behind his troops. They go one more. They might be able to move one more. Hmm. What unit is this? Robertson's Brigade. Who are these guys? Anderson. Robertson's guys, okay, let's move these guys. I want these guys to take Devil's Den. Anderson, how much how much more movement do they have? Two, that's enough. Anderson, keep them on this road here, there we go. There we go, we got nice little movement here. These guys are all still locked down, so that's that. As infantry is going to harass me. No effect. Union sharpshooters. Alright, now it's our turn to fire. So we'll keep pounding their artillery here. That's what happened in these Civil War battles. I mean, you, you were trying to pound in your artillery, and you can see it's hard to knock out their guns. So, you know, his infantry's backed off, too, so now I'm just I'm pounding his artillery and hoping to score hits. Nope. Come on, nope. I got my infantry in there tight now. I got fatigue, that's good. Wow, they had high ground, they were shooting down on them and they didn't do any damage. Ooh, 25, that's good. I don't think any of these guys can shoot. I've got this supply wagon, I gotta get that moving down there. 
and moving down the way too. Ooh, Mee Lee. What are their numbers? 150. Hmm. Should I really just brush these guys aside until I can keep moving? Well, these guys are coming down a hill. Seven to nothing. I think we ought to be able to take them. Wow, okay. Yep, that was good. Are they disrupted? They're both disrupted, so I'll need to get them to uh, hopefully undisrupt. Good. All right, that's going to do it for the Confederates. Let's... No more melee to be had. Enemy movement. Some Zwabs over here. Looks like the enemy infantry is backed away from Devil's Den, so hopefully I can get this infantry in and assault. They start shooting at those guns up there and maybe take out some of their, um, take out their crews. If you can take out the enemy crew, that's always a good thing. See if these guys can hit them. Nope. Take out a gun. Ah, increase the fatigue, that's good. I think they can hit him through that woods. Oh, got him again. It's another gun out of action. I'd like to get a shot at this gun here. That battery is just not something I can easily get them over. Oh yeah, nice. There's a little duel going from these two. All right. Ooh! Artillery hit. Killed 50 men. Ooh! Man, he's had a good round. There won't be any Union melee. Alright, we're on to turn three, looks like. Two units undisrupted. Okay, good. That's the two that were in melee, so that's good. And. I wish it would tell me which. Hmm. Move, disrupted, low ammo, highlight org. Visible spaces is useful. Should be one that tells you where you can move. All right, let's go. Got any more moves left? One, so. There we go. What's he got left for movement? That's it. Oop, bad to me. Robertson, Robertson. That is Anderson. So I got two brigades attacking here, and then I've got a third in, coming up in reserve. What, are they, what happened to these guys? Oh, they routed! Whew. Man, that's brutal. Hood better get those fellas going, man. A nice shot, but the enemy... By the enemy guns there. It's still fixed. Yep. All right. That was bad. Survive this. Oh, 
Good. Fatigue is good. Anytime you increase your enemy's fatigue, it's a good thing. So fatigue, I guess we don't know what it is, but come on, get hits. There we go. Still got five guns. That's a big battery. That's going to do it for that. I think we're going to have melee now. Good deal. There we go. We took some losses, though. We do have the 86 New York over there. I don't see any more melee, so we took out their guns, which is great. Union move phase. Who are these guys? It's another regiment. That one regiment. Turn three. General Longstreet. Now would be the time to release the next echelon. The Union troops. 20th Maine. There you go. 16th Michigan. My home state. All right. Are we in movement? They're still routed. Must be a fire phase. Good. All fatigue is good fatigue. That's going to be it for that round. Ooh, he's firing at my supplies. Good deal. Okay, we got the first thing we got to do is one of them still routing. So we got to take that. And for the unit that is no longer routing, we need to get them back into line and we need to about face. And these guys here, we might be able to about face them. Nope. General Hood, get your men in order. Which movement will we have still left? Anything left? Nope. OK. 
can't believe they don't have to, just to pivot. There we go. There we go. And what Anderson's going to have to work through and head this way. Benning. Whew. I'm not going to hold up the whole battle just so Benning's guys can play catch up. So let's get these guys out of here. Hopefully we can hit them. And are these guys released yet? No. Man, come on, release them. Let's go. All right, we'll go with that's the movement. I don't know how I'm going to take Little Round Chopper without those two regiments. Loss of 25. I should have moved that. That's what I should have moved. Ooh, that could be bad. All right, offensive fire time. There we go. That's it for those guys. So we're at 4.40 p.m. So you can check down here in the lower left-hand corner. Man, their fatigue's got to be getting up there. Hmm. There we go. Good. Needed that hit. Be down to four. Good deal. So those guns have each taken two hits. I gotta start shooting at this unit here. It's gonna do some damage. Might kill kill my crews. I think that's gonna be it for the fire phase. Melee. That's a qu great question. Is what what are we gonna do about this melee? Can I? Should I attack into him? Six to one. Yes, I should. Good deal. All right. All right, I just wanted to see. I couldn't help myself. Six to one, yeah, we're gonna do that. All right, we're pushing them back. Fatigue's at four though. Fatigue's at six and four. Zero and one. Zero, zero. Zero, zero. I gotta get guys that aren't fatigued into this fight. Boy, that other unit is just still a mess. Oops, oh, it's it's a melee. That's it for melee. It's a good melee round. Hopefully they'll fall back. Hopefully they'll realize the error of their ways trying to hold. Nope. Well, this is turning out pretty historically similar so far because Law's Brigade, with the exception of these guys bailing quick, um, Law's Brigade end up attacking over well over in here these guys look like they're on the front face of little round top I might have to cut through here it might take me a little while but
Keep pushing them. A lot of disruptions with them. Good deal. Oh, exceeded by one hex. Still fixed. About time to release those guys. Come on now. That's going to do it. I think I fired this guy. I did. Keep finding my cannons. So the Confederates were attacking in echelon, and um, what happens is Governor K. Warren, who was a uh, engineer, he ends up being a corps commander later in the war. And that's a long story. But Governor K. Warren's on top a little round top, and there's a great statue of him up here. You're probably familiar with it if you know anything about Gettysburg at all. Great position to take a picture of Governor K. Warren's statue. He's standing on a rock. He's looking off in this direction. And it's symbolic. He's looking off in the direction where he sees the Confederates. And he realizes there's no Union troops here up on, on um, Little Round Top. Okay, Kershaw's Brigade just got released. Great. Um, and so... What he, oh man, some of my guys took a took a run again. Whew. Brutal. Moment do I have left? Two. Here we go. Get him back. How much movement does he have left? Two. I'm not gonna. Bennings, Georgians, zero fatigue. Robertson, are these guys Robertsons too? Good deal. We'll go up here. We'll go here. We're going to turn. Nope. Gosh darn it. I'm taking that objective, so yay for the south. Fatigue one and zero, and fatigue seven and four. These guys are not in good shape. These guys are, well, these guys are ready to crack, and these guys are ready to crack. All right, what do we got with these fellas here? Zero fatigue, one fatigue, and tons of moves. Hmm. I don't like coming around this open area. Union battery here. Guy who was in command of this battery was killed. They actually had this battery up on the little round top and he was killed. The Confederate sharpshooter from Devil's Den shot him. And then Strong Vincent, who was a commander, uh, Vincent, you see his name down here, of this brigade, he was killed. So, yeah, a lot of guys that were at that position got killed that day because that was exposed a little bit the front end of that little round top here seeing it's a little bit exposed what are the fatigue levels zero and one these guys got six moves left so i'm going to move those guys up hoods with them so good that they're fatigued so low and then kershaw is that kershaw right there yeah okay so this is the second element of the Palmetto of South Carolinians. Nice. Guys release. 
least not yet. All right, so here comes the next echelon. So Kershaw's brigade is running. These poor main boys just ran into uh, a world of hurt. All right, that's going to do it for that move. So just like the historical battle, the Confederates have taken Devil's Den and are now making a move through this wooded area here where they can avoid being shot to pieces and are going to move through this terrain here, which I think is going to be much better for them rather than um, marching through this little valley of death here. I have no interest marching down there up attacking up that face. I'm hook around here and Hit him. I think it's basically how they did it historically. They're trying to fatigue those guys. All right, here we go. Confederate offensive fire phase. Good. Good. You can run low on ammo in this game too. Interesting thing too is when you shoot, you you no longer see the round. Here, so you can if you go to this guy, you can tell they've shot. These guys can still fire the mini ball. I don't think I can hit. Yeah, I can. Get up, get a hit. There. Who's this here? Humphreys. There's sickles right there. This. Nope. I caught him in the open. Sh that might be. Yeah. At least they got something out of the deal. Nice. <coughs> so the third main just took quarter casualties. In a matter of seconds. <clears throat> Get one more gun. There we go. Nice. Down to what? Three? Great. They gotta be ready to unlimber and get out of there. What do we got there? Brooks. Well, he's he's just pulling men out all along this line here. All right, have I not? Who have I not fired? <coughs> Excuse me. Hmm. Still don't understand why that unit can't hit those guy. Oh, it's all right. All right, that's gonna take it for that melee phase. All right, this is fatigue four and seven. Nope, we're not doing that. Two to zero. Hmm. You know, I got the advantage. I'm not going to do it. This, this looks promising. Oh, yeah, we'll take those odds. Take them. All right. 
Way to push him back. That'll do it for that phase. All right, union move phase. So Governor K. Warren sees the Confederates coming and then he sends someone off to grab anyone who can uh, send reinforcements to get them out of Little Round Top because there wasn't, there was just a bunch of Signal Corps guys on Little Round Top. And so Warren gets, um, somehow they get Vincent's unit and Vincent's guys um, defend Little Round Top. And the Alabamans, who are down here, Law's Brigade, Law ended up being the governor of Alabama, they uh, they attack. They they haul in and attack. Just like I'm attacking it this time. They're doing the same tactics. They see the same things. And they're going to go around that side and hit it and see what they can do. Uh, meanwhile, the echelon attack's coming in. We're talking, what is it, 5 o'clock now? Yep, it's 20-minute turn. So it's 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, why the heck is it 5 o'clock in the afternoon? Well, it's... It's late in the day because Longstreet had to counter march. He was got late to deploy because um, oh they rallied. He got late to deployment. Oh, nice shooting, lads. He he uh, when his troops were marching. To position, they marched in. There was an open area, and they had to turn around and march back because they didn't want. They were exposed to the enemy, and so he went a different route. He had to turn the, and and instead of you know the the head of the column becoming the tail of the column and the column turning around like that, no, they did a snake maneuver. So like the head just turned around and rolled back across the rest of the column, and the column turned around in that order. So it was a big mess. And oh boy, I need to, I need to do some more damage here. And so what ends up happening is they're late to deploy, and that ends up being a factor because darkness set in. We only got twelve turns to do all our business. So that's what happened historically, and that's part of the reason why they couldn't. That and Sickles being where he wasn't supposed to be, they didn't well. Sickles was where he expected to be, but the Union or the Confederates didn't expect him to be there because they couldn't believe it. Oh, they're great. Another another loss of a gun. Great. Starting to win this artillery duel here. So that's how that went down. This guy's still fixed. Okay. Now let's see if the Union's going to immediately... So this attack's going in at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We're late in the day already. Lost about 10 hours of daylight marching around. It did not help the Confederates at all. I intend to take that wheat field with these guys. Kershaw's. Oh, nice. Sem's brigade's released. Great. Ah. Unit broken ran. That's not good. Any movement left? Two. That's not going to be enough to get up that hill. It's not gonna be enough to get up to that position. We got here. So still got laws guys moving up. Three regiments of Alabamans. And these guys got disrupted and these guys broke. So I had two units of Laws Brigade break. Oh, we do not have 
have the ability to turn around. Anderson's guy, so it's Benning. Anderson's over here. Oh, I shouldn't be banning over here. Benning over this way. I'm going to need these guys over in this attack, too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to swing around. Ah, just move them. No, don't want to go that way. Is there an undo button? There is not. Oh, that's not good. That's their movement. What are these guys? These guys are back. Bennings Brigade. These guys are back. Fatigue 1. Nice. Got hood with some of those guys. At least about face these guys. Yes, I can. All right, good deal. So this attack is going to go through pretty quick here. Can't wait forever. No fatigue. My question is, what am I going to do with Kershaw's guys? I think I'm going to deploy him in here and head for the wheat field. Left, no, okay. So these guys have moved in. Bears released yet? And I think I'm gonna move these guys like this. And these guys are gonna come down here and it's gonna be these guys, these guys, and these guys just laying the hammer down on sickles. These guys going for this, these guys continue to hold them busy. Hopefully, the union doesn't have a whole lot of men down in here and I can. I can take this, cause havoc down here, and get up in Little Round Top here and do what I need to do. Take that position. All right, that's going to do it. I think I'm going to need to move McClaws up with his men. Get up there and lead the attack. Our best officers in command and moving forward. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of John Tiller's Battleground Civil War and the Gettysburg Module, um, which is uh, um, is Longstreet's attack against Little Round Top in the Wheatfield. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next episode.